Man, got a special guest with me today. Got my my little brother, uh, Terrell, to get a bucket stolen. <laughs> What's going on, bro, man? I, I appreciate you taking time out, you know, your day to join Go Turpins with Travis Garrison on the Field of Six Eight Networks. I appreciate you taking time out. I think you're overseas right now, right? Yes, um, I'm actually competing in the African NBA Cup right now. Oh, okay. So my team is from Morocco. We're named Saleh. So they got us out here in Rwanda, man. We're preparing for that. Oh, yeah? Shit, that's what's mm-hmm. up, man. That's what's up, man. How's that How's that going? How long you been out there for? Uh, I've been out here for a month. Well, Morocco for a month. And we just traveled out here. We've been here for two days. So yeah. they have us in quarantine. We're not even allowed to leave the room. You know, we're just sitting here for three days before we can even practice. Man, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. I was, I was, I was wondering how, how overseas life has been, especially with COVID going on, man. How that, how that whole transition has been, man. Because obviously, you know how, how it was before pre-COVID, but how it is now, especially traveling those Middle Eastern countries and things like that over in Africa and stuff like that, man. Yeah, um, it's been challenging, just like everything else in life. You know, mm-hmm. it's been yeah. uh, placed on hold, um, even. With this situation, like we're quarantining for four days, we can't even talk to our team or leave the room. You know what I mean? Dang. So it's 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 very different. You know, it, it low key feels like prison. You know what I'm saying? Man, like, that's crazy. I'm on C block. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. But I mean, that's I mean, you still you still playing though, man. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a blessing. I definitely don't take it for granted. Um, you know, it's my ninth year. You know what I mean? And I still feel young. You know what I mean? I just I'm just happy to be here and continue to uh, do what I do. Man, you are young, man. What you mean you feel young? You are young, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know hey, so, hey, hey, was you able to check out any, uh, any of the Maryland team this year? Or even last any, year? Even, the, oh, yeah. the Maryland team? Oh, man, yeah. dude. You know, I was dealing with, you know, family and dealing with things like that. And I, I rarely watch college basketball. You right. know what I mean? So um, I really didn't get to watch. But the fans were hitting me up and letting me know they did well. They went to the tournament. I actually watched the tournament game. Okay, that okay, I did okay. watch, you know, but other than that, you know, I've been out the loop. Yeah, what you, you think of the tournament game? Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, God bless him. You know, that's yeah. it. Yeah. God bless him. Yeah. You know? nah, yeah, man, it was – Um, they definitely, man, you know, they, they, they made that run. You know, it was, obviously they was on the bubble getting in, man, and they finally, you know, made that run and was able to get in the tourney. And, you know, they played well the first game. Then, the, the you know, obviously the second, man, who, when they played them boys, it was, it was tough. Well, you know, uh, I think you know, too, because you grew up in a different generation. Basketball is different right now. Right. And I'll be honest, man, I'm not impressed by a lot of what I see. I'm going to be right. real with it. Right. You know, right. brothers don't play with that heart that we grew up playing with, you know, and um, it's just a different game. Right. You know, right. so I'm not really impressed with too much of what I see, period. Right. Right. Now, yeah. that's, hey, hey, you speaking the truth, man. You, you speaking, you speaking how you feel, man. Hey, question for oh. you, though. You you from you from you from you from Arizona, right? From Arizona, mm-hmm. right? From mm-hmm. Arizona. So what what made you choose to go to Maryland? Uh, the tradition. You know what I'm saying. So I'm from Arizona, so I'm used to the University of Arizona. They had a tradition with Lou, with Lou Olson, and Coach Gary Williams reminded me of Coach Lou Olson, but he had a bigger name. Right. And um, the ACC is the best conference. You know, you right. playing against Duke and North Carolina, they in your conference. Right. You feel right. me? So like. Right. get in and it was less politics with coach Gary Williams let's be straight with coach right. Gary Williams it was less politics right and it was more of if you put it out there you put the work and you will play it don't matter right. what star you are yeah. you know and none of that you know he was right. about the heart and the effort right, right. you know I, I like the warrior spirit right you know so that was it plus yeah. you know they showed me much love like they were going to my my math classes and making sure I was on time and all that stuff in high school so I was like yo oh, wow. they they real with it <laughs> right, 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 right. Now that's 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 that's, that's what's up, man. Um, what other schools would you consider? Like, if you didn't go to Maryland, where were you gonna go? Like, what other school? Where, where um, I was considering UCLA. Um, what else was I considering? I was considering UCLA, Arizona. Um, well, all the Pac-12 t- teams were, were recruiting me, so they I was considering all of them. Right, you know, just to stay on the, stay on the West Coast and stay close to right. the family. Right, and um, let me see. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. yeah. And I can't really remember. I was going with the with the teams and the schools that showed me and my family the most love. Right. You know, that's that's really what it was. 
Okay, you okay, know? okay. Yeah. So, so when you <laughs> when you when you made that transition, man, to come to Maryland, man, and you got on campus, man, what was that feeling like? What was that transition like? Once you stepped on the campus, like you know, because like I said, you from Arizona, man, so you come to 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 Maryland, man. It's you know, DC is right there. So, what was that transition like for you off the court and on the court? Oh man, it was lovely. You know, College Park is one of a kind. You know, the the students were amazing, you know, and the students be fans. So they right. treat you so well. You know, right. um, the family orientation that we had at the University of Maryland was amazing. You know, mm -hmm. from the academic advisor to the head coach, like we were family. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then my teammates were my brothers. So I enjoyed it, man. I still have a relationship with my teammates. So like, we good. I, I enjoyed it. You know, that's the best way I can describe it on here. You feel right, me? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> now I get it, man, for sure, man. I know, like I said, man, you know, like, me being from Maryland, then, you know, I used to go up to Maryland sometimes before I even went there and just, you know, to hang with this before they even won the, the championship. So I'm hanging with all those, the, 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 those guys, the Steve Blakes and the Moutons and, and Drew Nickens, seeing those guys, man, but just also seeing the, the work that they put in to, to even get to that level, man, just the mindset that they had, you know what I mean? The focus that they had, the dedication that they had, standing in the gym late, man, just seeing that whole – process take place so when they won the championship it wasn't surprising to me you know what I mean? because i knew the work they put in i used to, i used to go up to open gym and i see when the lights go off how steve blake is staying there how back in the days when Juan used to shoot in there with no lights on you know what i mean i used to see that yeah. whole process take place man so um even when i was up there as a freshman you know seeing how steve blake and drew nicholas used to come in late nights and get the work in you know what i mean so right. just just seeing that whole process man and seeing that to get to where they was at in regards to the championship and just had that leadership you know you know what? You know, that's a great point that you made. And, and you were fortunate in that case where you had legends, you right. know what I'm saying, to look up to and watch. You know, right. I didn't really, you know, no disrespect, but I didn't have Steve Blake and Steve Francis right. and them yeah. in the gym when I was there. You feel me? Yeah, right, but right, I will right. say that I kept that tradition. I was in there with the lights off. I was in there putting in work because when I got there, I had no respect. I'm from right. Arizona. No one really, no one cared, you know. They, right. they all about the East Coast, so they didn't know too much about me. Right. So, you know, that makes me feel better about myself because that was me. You right. feel me? Right. You know, so, 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 yeah. So, so, so what, what, so what, what was it like for you in regards to your preparation? You know, like you say, I know you say you was in the gym late, late at night. What was your schedule like? You know, obviously y'all had practice. I'm not sure how, I know Coach Williams, you know, I don't know if they, he kept the same schedule, but we had practice around 345 to about five-ish, you know what I mean? Uh, we didn't really do the, the early morning workouts unless we got in trouble, you know, and we had to run yeah, steps yeah. and stuff like that. But other yeah. than that, we, we had we, – our schedule was, you know, 3.45 to 5, and then we go to study hall. So what was your schedule like after practice or before practice or, you know, in regards to working out and training and preparing for the season or game? Well, man, first off, I did a lot yeah. of that running the stairs in the stadiums. I did a lot of that in the mornings. You know what I'm saying? Coach had me up in there, so I was one of them too. Mm -hmm. So right. my schedule was running in the morning, you know, whatever do the stairs in the morning, go to right. class. And then they set, they set me up real nicely where a couple of my classes were just massages, where I was just going okay. just getting massages and getting graded right. for that. You feel me? Right, right, right. And then practice was always in the evening. You know, I think Coach Williams, he was getting older when I came. So he right. was more of a, he was more chill. Right. You know, so I think, I think that played a lot of part in it. You know, we had evening practices, which was great. Right. You know. So what? So I mean, was you getting in the gym late at night? I know you said you was in the gym late at night, man. Um, and, and and the luxury of that is, you know, obviously, you know, we tell the managers what time we get up in the gym, and they make sure the ball's out for us. And all we gotta do is go in there and swipe that card, and we go through the back door, and we we in the gym, and it's, <laughs> and, it, and it's nothing like it, man, because you know there was nights nice I going in the gym, and it's just quiet, and you around out, you in the, we we in the, at the com, it was the Comcast and every time, but you're at the yeah. Infinity Center, and it's like quiet, but you got all you got you seen all the seats around the whole arena, man, and but it's empty, so you kind of yeah. like in the zone, but you also can imagine yourself if it was game time, and you you know what I mean. So it was it was it was yeah. a great feeling, man. That late night work is quiet in there, nobody in there, you know. Yeah, um, same, you know, and I still call it Comcast Center because in my mind it's still Comcast Center. You feel me? Right, right, right. And right. um, I did exactly what you did. I had that key. I swipe it up. And the thing is, I was real cool with the, the ball managers. And, and okay. the, they were, you know, they were, those were my guys. So right. anytime I hit them up, anytime at night, which was literally around like 3.30 every night, right. uh, morning, I was in there. You right. feel me? And I was imagining myself, you know, playing in front of everybody. I feel like a kid again. Right. You know, you know, when you want three, two, one, you get that last shot. I was, right. man, everything that I became sophomore year was because I was imagining it when no one else was there. Right. You feel right. me? 
You know, so, so yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. So, so because I remember the first time me meeting you was when we were pros at the time. You know, he's over in Greece. You know, but before that, yeah, I wasn't yeah. really watching. I wasn't really watching Merlin that much, so I didn't really know yeah. too much about you. But I, I mean, right. I heard I heard about you. And then, I mean, how you was killing? And I started seeing the videos and seeing yeah. how you was just on a mission. So, what what was what was it like, man? Like you said, we talked about, you know, playing the ACC, playing against those North Carolina, those Dukes. And I know how you play. And I know how you get when it's them, them big games, you know what I mean? So what was it like for you? Like, what was your best moments in regards to Merlin and, and like your best experiences in regards to like a game or a game that you could think of? Like, man, that, man I was in the zone. That, that was like one of the best experiences ever. Like, what okay. was that for you? Okay. First of all, glory to God. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. without him, I couldn't have done none of that, even to this day, you know. Right. So I want I want right. to make that known. Right. Second of all, the biggest game for me was uh, my breakout game freshman year when we played North Carolina. You know, I had 30 points as a freshman, and then I went on that like I had like nothing less than 25. I kept going on that streak. It was uh we played North Carolina. I was a freshman. I gave them 28, and then we came and played against North Carolina State, and they were um retiring Gravis Vasquez. That's yeah, the Gravis, yeah. Yeah, G, G Money, you know what I'm saying? They were retiring his jersey, you know, and he came to me while he was retiring jersey. He was like, I told you, this is my school, you know, and, I, and he told me that. And um, I went out, had 25 and nine assists, you feel uh, me? Uh, and I, I stole that day from him, you feel me? Yeah. And that was one of my days and one of the games where I was like, all right, you know, you real. When I look in the mirror and go to sleep, like, okay, you real. Let's right, go. Right, right. You know, right, and I ain't, right. I ain't look back since after that. Those two yeah. games, I ain't look back. Yeah. yeah you said, you said, Grievous came to you and said, This is my, this is my school. Yeah, <laughs> man. You know, G, you know, pe you know, people, <laughs> you know, people always talk about, you know, what a great guy he is. And he is a great guy. But, you know, people ain't real at the same time. Like, to be yeah. a great basketball player, you got to be a dog, man. You got to, right, right. you know, have ultimate confidence in yourself. Yeah. And that's what yeah, he right. had that. People yeah. don't talk about that too often because they yeah. want to be whatever. I don't know what they right. want to be, but. I'm going to be real with it. You know, they retired his jersey. You know, he looked at me. The whole team was, like, shaking his hand and all that stuff. And he knew he knew me. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. And he looked at me and was like, I told you, it's my school. And I was <laughs> like, I looked at that I looked at that brother like, oh, okay. You know, and yeah, I went in the it, zone. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that, I mean, that's, that's how grievance is, man. He, but, but like you said, man, it takes that to, to be a special kind of player. You know what I mean? Like, he, but he's been like that. Since I know him, even through high school, and that's that Venezuela type that that attitude, man. Just that's just how he is, just regards to how he played, and that's why he had that type of career he had, and was able to go to the league. You know, I was telling people before that, man. I was like, man, yeah, man, Green is gonna make it, bro, because of his work ethic. Like he don't, yeah, he works hard. Yeah. Like he's, he he works his butt off. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's 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 funny, man. But um, but yeah, man. So you saying so you saying that breakout game in North Carolina, then your sophomore year was just pretty much you like, man, you just you was just in the zone. You was just like how was that song well, well, for you? Well, those those two times was freshman year. So those right. were two of my freshman year games. That's I had like a streak, like five or six games where I had scored none less than 25, and it was the end right. of the year. Mm -hmm. That's that's what took me in that momentum for a sophomore year. Right. So uh sophomore year, I was just in the zone every game, bro. I was hungry, you know. Right. You know, I, I can't even call out a game where I was just like, I was just hungry every game. Right. You know. Right. So so when so when you were there, so how was how was it what was your experience like playing for G dub, man? Like you know where I was just like I was just hungry every game. Right. You know. Right. So so when so when you were there, so how was how was it what was your experience like playing for G dub, man? Like, you know, obviously everybody has their different experiences, man. And you know, you know, I can talk back to the older cats, man, when, when G Dub was a little younger, you know, but I know when I played for him, he still was fiery, but he was getting up there. And then your age, you're you you are younger than me. Um so he probably, I just want to know, like, what was that experience like for you? I know you say he's more mild at that time, but what was that experience like for you in regards to you playing for him and how y'all relationship was? Man, he was great. You know what I'm saying? His nickname for me was Little Shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, was all, he was always on my head, you know. Um, Coach Williams was, like, the reason why I went to Maryland. And when I was there, you know, I wish he would have stayed. I would have stayed all four years. And right. me and him talked about it after I left my sophomore year. You know, we talked, we had a we had a very private talk about that, you know. And right. I feel like if he would have stayed, you know, I would have stayed and a lot of things would have been done. Right. You know, I didn't want him to leave and I didn't want who came to come. I'll be right. real with you. Because I came right. for one coach. I didn't come for this, for this. Right. You know, so and matter of fact, Turgeon, he recruited me. He gave me a scholarship at Texas AM and I turned that down like that. 
Right. You know, so when he came to Maryland, the first thing he told me was, I got you. Wow. You know what I mean? And and, and so, you know, uh, to stay on topic, you know, Coach Gary Williams was probably one of the best coaches that I've ever played with or played for. I learned a mm. lot from him. Mm. You know, I loved his warrior spirit, and I still attack every game as if he's coaching me because right. he instilled some of his players that made them play their best. Right. You feel me? Right. You know right. that. Like, yeah, he, of course, he made of you want to get out there and go ahead and get it. Right. You know? Right. right. So, I mean, I give him credit for that. Oh yeah, yeah, man, definitely, man. Like, like you, like you said, man. Just his attitude. He's a player's coach, you know. What I mean, being a former player, but still, have, it's like it's like, um, you know, Ben. And he was a point. He was a guard, so he obviously he relates to you guys a lot too. Right. And then he, like you said, he likes that type of. He likes those dudes to go out there and like go get ahead of dog mentality because that's how he is. You know. Yeah. What I mean? so, he, so when another player is like that, he like, man, go ahead and get it. Like that is is more relatable for him. Y'all see more yeah. eye to eye because of how he is. So if he has another point guard that's like that, he's going. It's, it's, it's so it, yeah, it's like head to head. You know what I mean? So yeah, and, yeah. and then like his his intensity, like you said, you have to match that. So you don't want your intensity to be low. Like my attitude because I ain't too <laughs> and I ain't too fired up. You know what I mean? Because sometimes yeah. he's just in chill mode and he ain't like that. He like man, like man, like wake up, like you know what I mean? Like yeah. like wake up. Yeah. But I'm in. The, I be chilling. You know because you know I played for my high school coach. He was more chill and mild. You know, he went about the talking and talking trash and stuff like that. Because it was a point in time, I, I thought I wanted to be like Kevin Garnett. So I'm talking trash all the time. But he ain't like that. He was like, man, just right. be quiet and let the game talk for itself. But then you go to Maryland with Coach G. Dell. He likes that type the of opposite. stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? So, so yeah. but by the time I got to Maryland, I'm more mild now. I'm more chill. And he ain't really like that too much. He more he wants you to fire. He wants you fired up. It's a, like you say, we're in the ACC tournament. I mean, not we're in the ACC. Playing these big games. Like, how can you not be fired up we got eighteen thousand people in here and how can you not be fired up so if you don't match his intensity he don't he, he wasn't a fan of that he ain't like that i, I say i say it like this i agree with you i say you know coach Williams wants people who play with their heart right when you play with your heart comes passion right so even if you are playing well if you ain't showing that passion he like you ain't playing with your heart you right. know and, and right. that's what i got that's my interpretation of it you right. know some some right. coaches they they ain't got no heart they just they about right. the x's and o's and go play right. ball and then but I can't play for those type dudes, right. you know, because I'm gonna be out there. I'm gonna be talking. I'm gonna be hitting my chest. I'm gonna be because right. I'm passionate about this. You know? Right, right, right. So like, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So, 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 all right. So you say when G Dub leave you, when Coach G Dub leave you, end up making a decision to leave yourself. Even if, and you say you weren't even planning on leaving, but because of G Dub, once he left, you made the decision just go ahead and leave. Like so, I mean, was you talking to an agent or was you thinking like, well, what was your process through that? Well. It was it was like this. Coach Tur uh, Coach Turgeon came my sophomore year, so like my okay. sophomore year, I didn't play with G Dub. So okay. yeah, so when G Dub left, I did want to leave. But when Turgeon came, he made a lot of promises to a brother, and he did. You know, he put the ball in my hand. He let me score. He let me right. do you know whatever. You right. know, so I stayed for that for that for those promises that he he gave me. But I was going to mm. leave too. I was going to go to UCLA. Okay. You know, yeah, that's where I was gonna go, but and you saw what happened. What what happened? You know, right, right. So, so, so once you make the decision to go, because obviously you left school early. I mean, what was that process like? You know, getting ready for your next transition professionally. What was that process like for you? And you know, what was that? What was your thoughts going through that whole situation? Man, I mean, I, I just looked at it as me just being a warrior. You know, when I yeah. left Maryland, a lot of lies were told on me. And who's gonna listen to the student athlete? They're yeah. gonna listen to the university. Right. You know, but the university, they're a business, so they're going to cover their own tail. Right. You know, so a lot of lies were given to me. A lot of betrayal happened, you know. And um, so I had to deal with that as, as a child. I'm 19 years old. Right. I'm dealing with the whole state bashing me because they're thinking I made poor decisions. In actual reality, I never made those decisions. All I did right. was play basketball and come home. You right. know what I'm saying? That's, right. that's the honest God truth. My girlfriend right. lived with me at the time. She'll tell you, too. You know what I mean? So, right. like, yeah. I was dealing with a lot of mental battles. Right. You know, and then when I was working out for the NBA, I was dealing with a lot of blackballing from Coach Turgeon. You know, I'll say right. the truth. You know, right. I, I heard he was saying a lot of things about me that wasn't true. So mm. I had a lot of times where I was just like, what's going on? Why? Right. You know, why, why, is it, why, why are people doing this? Why are people lying on me? Why is the media painting a picture of me that's not even true? Right. You know, and why is this grown man lying on me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I was going through it. Like, right. so my mindset was just like, you know, put your trust in God. Everything happened for a reason. This is right. part of my journey, my story. And take your butt to Greece and go hoop with Trav. 
<laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. Yeah, man. Let's, let's go ahead and lead on to that in the sense of um uh yeah, man. So when when I when I did, I forgot what year that was like 2000 and that year it was like 2013. It was 2013. It was 2013. And yeah. I know my agent contacted me and said I'm going to Greece. And I think what I always used to do, I used to always look on the roster and see who's on there. I knew yeah. uh, I knew Alusha, I knew Al mm-hmm. because yeah. we he played at Michigan State and we played mm-hmm. against them. And then I also was with him with the uh, Lakers. We was in the uh, the D League team with them. We was in training camp together there. So I knew okay. him from that. And then I also knew him from um well I mean Al played that man. So I knew Al and then Mike Creppy. I think Mike was there at the time. He was there. We, so Mike from Maryland, he was from here. And then I saw yeah. you was on there. I said, Merlin Cat, I said, young dude, okay. So like I said, because I wasn't following Merlin that much. But obviously, I do my research and, you know, ask people around. And then I saw y'all there. So it was like, man, we family. They got Mike, they got out there, you there. So it was like, you know, always was not worried about, but like seeing who go with my teammates and the who the Americans are when I go uh, play in these different countries. So, yeah, that was our first year playing together, man. That was my first time meeting you, man, professionally. That was your first year out. Hey, I'll tell you what, man, there's nothing better than being around brothers, mm-hmm. you know, and not just brothers, but brothers who know you who come where you're from. I'm from Arizona, but I mean, my people's in Baltimore and D.C. That, I call y'all my family. You know, y'all right. my family. So being around y'all, we, we had a great time man. I learned a lot from y'all, you yeah. know, what to do, what not to do, you know, how to deal with certain situations. And and even the Greece situation wasn't the best for, for all of us, you know, right. but. It was my first year, and I never had a situation any worse, and I'm able to, like, adapt now. Right, right. You know, and honestly, that was probably one of my favorite years I had as a pro, man. I was with my brothers, you know. Right, right, And right. even then, like, Land- Landon Milborn and James Gist was there. They was yeah, in, right. in, Maryland in Greece, too. too. Yeah. Like, we had a whole mm-hmm. bunch of Maryland family, bro. Like, right, right. ACC boys, like, it was, it was cool. Right, right, know? man. Like, and, and, I, and I seen that process, and we had – Obviously, we had a lot of conversations, you know, uh, about, you know, basketball and then, like, the whole professional career because, like I said, you've been a rookie. You really know too much. But in, in, in the, situation, the situation that we were in was not, like, the norm. It wasn't the norm in regards to the professional life, you know, like, in the sense of whether it's getting paid all time or not getting paid at all, the living arrangements mm-hmm. or things like that, you know. Right. Um, because I, I played in different situations where – you know, it's a five star everything, or you know, the accommodations weren't the greatest. You know, probably still was getting paid well, so it was a lot of different situations I was already in. Right, right. It's like I don't cut you off, but like just to to piggyback on you with that, it's like being a professional athlete playing overseas. It's more of a mental game. Mm-hmm. You're more of a professional in having to adapt to any situation. Right. You know, it, a lot of people think that it's just like basketball, like the United States. Like you go to play basketball, but even in the United States, it's not basketball. When you get to a higher level. And they right. people don't know that the fans don't know that they think it's the best players that are in the NBA. And this, yeah. this no, no, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of business, and you have to be prepared mentally for it. Right. So when I became a professional, I call it a mental game. It's we right. playing chess now. It ain't even right. about playing ball no more. It's about right. which <laughs> you feel right, me? right. So like, yeah, I, I was, I agree. Yeah, know? man. Yeah, man. De- definitely, you know. So we we played over in Greece together. Um, I think you might stay there longer than that. I end up leaving around April. I end up leaving around April. I think you end up staying. Yeah, you, you stayed longer than I did because yeah, around I April, I up, yeah, around April, I end up going. I end up leaving, going back home, man. Um, I couldn't deal with not getting paid. That yeah, it was around April. I left. I, I left in May. Oh yeah, so, so you left after. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, not getting paid and stuff, man. I was I was pretty much done with it. Like especially like me, man, being older and being in situations where you know. I'm used to getting paid late. I'm cool. And I mean, I'm not cool with it, but I knew what it was. I knew I was going to eventually get my money. But, you know, yeah. certain places, they just won't go pay you at all. And you're just going to be sitting there and you never going to see that money. So you're playing for free and you're away from your family. And, you know, that and, whole. And, and, uh, and, and this got to be said, too. Not only do they not pay you on time in certain situations, but they expect you to be professional. And it's like right. they you you come to practice 10 minutes early. They're like, oh, why aren't you here 30 minutes early? It's right, like, right. You didn't even pay me. I shouldn't okay. even come. Right, you know, right, right, and, right. And then they start, you know, and depending on who they are, they might say, oh, this guy has a bad attitude. Right. You know, right, or this right. guy doesn't do this. And then, and then it, it, it's a different mental game, too, with us, because then it's like, what do I do? So we right. leave. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then, and like you said, man, a lot of people don't really understand. the con- A lot of people want me to write a book about it and stuff, man, about that whole experience, because a lot of people don't really know, especially if they're not athletes or, you know, never experienced that life. We're in the sense of, 
like, oh man, you get guys get to travel the world. Don't get me wrong, I'm definitely blessed and grateful to do it, you know, just because of basketball. But you know, I mean, you gotta think if you have a family, you're away from your family. Sometimes the living accommodations might not be the greatest. The country might you might not be in the the best country. Um, right. you might not be getting paid on time. Um, yeah. you know, the people you might get might get treated in regards to like how the, the people around that city might be uh, you living in, how they treating you. Um. Man, a lot of different, like you said, man, it's, it's a mental, it's a mental thing, but a lot of people don't understand it. Like, oh man, you get to travel overseas, get paid tax free. There's a lot that comes with that. You know, they, like here in the in the states is different because you're here in the states and you, you know, you're American and you with other Americans and things like that. But you we going overseas and you playing in different countries and different cultures and different language and different mindsets and different everything. And so now it's starting to come out. People starting to talk about the mental illness and and especially now because of COVID. Man, like you just said, you can't even see your teammates for four days. So it's, 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 it's different now. So it's like, now you got to go overseas, play in a different country. The living accommodation might not be the greatest. You can't leave the house. You look, don't have bro. your family with you. <laughs> let, 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 me, let, me, let me tell you a little story that just happened yesterday. So like, uh-huh. um, we in Africa, we're not allowed to leave the room, right? Uh-huh. So uh, I gave, I had to buy room service. So the dude came, I gave him $100. The mm-hmm. dude didn't come back with my change for two hours. So obviously, you know, what would you do? I go downstairs to figure out what's going on to talk to the reception. Long story short, I just got out of a meeting with the president of the NBA African League because they said I didn't follow protocol. Next time, just let them keep the hundred dollars and then wait till the morning to talk to the people about it. So that's another thing where I'm just like, I still don't understand that. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's it's like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, right. yo, I'm gonna go get my money. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right, right, you know? right, right. But that's just another situation where it's just like you gotta just and okay, you right. You know, get yeah. to your room and just be like, I go down in prayer, Lord. You know, be my strength. Right, you right. Know, the mind games begin. <laughs> right, of course, man. So, like you said, man, it's, it's definitely a different process, man. People, especially like, especially now, I don't I mean whether it's in college where they they can't play in front of fans and they used to play in front of fans now they can't play in front of fans and to like traveling overseas and obviously the money is a little different now because of the whole economy. And, you know, now you can't really leave your place. You can't really have a lifestyle like off the court because now you're stuck in the house and you're away from your family. So it's, it's so many different factors now, man, that like you said, man, it's, it's a game of chess. It's a, it's a mental, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of mental stuff going on now, man. It's a lot of mental game and, just gotta stay, man. It's, 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 it's tough so to mental. Be... I had to, I had to go get a harp. I call it a harp because I don't play it right. I just make a noise. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know what I'm saying? Because hey, I need whatever I can to keep this mental good. You right, feel me? right, right, so, like, right, right. You just gotta adjust. You gotta do whatever you gotta do to keep that peace of mind. Man, you yeah, know. Nah, and then when you are on the court, then you just let it out. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm about to let it out. Next game we play, it's a wrap. When is that next game? When is that next game? May 15th. Oh, so y'all play for, so y'all just dang. So you got some. You got oh that's uh, that's next week. That's next weekend. Next week, okay. But still, we have four yeah. days in here instead of practicing. We got to sit here. You feel me? I can't even get no shots up. You know, we, and it makes no sense because we all rode on the same bus here. We that's rode crazy. on the same plane here, but we can't practice. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? They had to sit next to each other in the in the in the conference room. Everybody listening to the rules and stuff, but we sit next to each other. But we can't go practice. That's you know? crazy, man. Yeah, man. So, so, so yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah. so, 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 so after after Greece, where where do you go? Like, what was your experience like after that? Because obviously, I think I I shut it down for about two two years after that. So I don't I wasn't playing. But what were, where were you, like what was your next steps and where did you go and Dang. what was your experience after, after that, that? After that, my sophomore year was a roller coaster, bro. I went everywhere. I was in France in the top division. Uh, I'll stay there for a little bit until they start playing with money or playing mm-hmm. with politics. I left there and I went to the Euro League. I went to Poland, played okay. for a team called Zelona Gora. I left there, went to the Ukraine. <laughs> I played left there. there went uh-huh. to, left there and went to Italy, you know, mm-hmm. and that was my sophomore year. So I played on like five teams my sophomore year. And then I decided to just leave Europe alone because Europe to me was straight slavery. Right. Like a lot of players would get on here and talk like Europe is this and that. I'm going to be real with you. Times a week. I mean, three times a day. Uh, they were late on payments. Um, that that in itself was not the business for me. You know, right, I'm, right. I'm I'm putting miles on my body, and you're not doing right. Right. You know, even the year league team, it was late on payments. I was like, "This the year league? How that right. work? Right. You feel me?" Right. And yeah, I was talking to James Gibbs. I don't put people business, but I was talking to him. He told me they was late on like five months, and he played on a big time team in the year league. Five right. months late, uh, I'm good. 
Right. So what I did my my year after my sophomore year, I, I came here. I came to Africa in the Middle East. I went to Lebanon, right. you know, where they treated you like a like a brother. Right. You know, and they appreciate your talent and they pay you everything you want. Right. You know, I make good money over here. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. I, right. I was good. You know. So, so, so. I, so after so after that, you was like, man, you usually you gonna stick to the Middle East. Because matter of fact, I saw I end up seeing you when I went to Bahrain in 2015. We played with each other. With uh with the Egypt team is Zalamek. 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 Yeah, Zalamek. I saw you in Dubai. Right, right. Oh, we played against you. We played against you. That's yeah, you played against yeah, me. Yeah, 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 we yeah, took yeah, a picture yeah. in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that, man. We ended up playing against each other that time, man. So that's that's the next yeah. time we met, met up back in the um in the um what was the African tournament. Was, no, no, it was, was no it was the, Dubai. We were yeah, in Dubai. Right, right. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. So yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. this so like so everyone knows like this is my home now. Like Dubai, Qatar, Lebanon, Africa. You know, I went to Egypt. I won a championship in Egypt two years ago. The first time that they won is 15 years. You know, I went there mm. the first year and we won, you know. Um, now I'm in Morocco. I'm playing with this Moroccan team, you know. And, and this is my home now. This is the motherland. And they treat they treat a brother real nice. Right. And they appreciate right. what I do on the court instead of trying to figure out ways to demolish the work that I put in for whatever right. reason they do it for. Right. <laughs> whatever right. reason. Right. I'm lost. I don't get right. it. But okay. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So I found a home out here and they love it. So so basically, so basically, so basically the rest of your career is gonna be uh in Africa or in the Middle East. Well, I can't call it, you know, but right now I'm home. You right. know, my son was actually born in Lebanon, you know, in Biblo. So like I'm I'm really out here. Like my my you know, I'm out here, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and that, and that's the thing, man. It's um, you know, I tell people, especially as you get older, man, it's I know once I started getting older, man, my whole thing was, yeah, man, I want to still play and make good money, but I want to be able to have life off the court too. I want to get, I want to experience this, just this, this, this experience this life. You know what I mean? I don't want to just be like, I'm mm. just working. And then after you get off the court, you're like, there's nothing. Nah, man, it's, as you get older, you start to appreciate things a little more. Um, you start to like, I wasn't, like I know early on, I wasn't really um, going outside and really touring and, and visiting and looking at the city and walking around the city and like exploring. But um, mm-hmm. in Turkey, in Turkey, my coach forced me to do it. Every city we went to, he's like, "Hey, we're gonna go for a walk. Hey, Travis, come on, man, we're going." To, I even I, rather probably I'm tired, I want to go take a nap. He's like, "No, nah, we're gonna do it," and I'm glad he did it because now, like, yeah. Turkey's like one of my second homes. I love it there. Um, right. And places like you said, man, you develop friendships and relationships, and then I mean, this some you, you can't you can't buy. We get we can do it for free because we because of basketball. I say this all the time to the young fellas. They always come to me with, I'm the vet now, dog. You believe that? I'm the vet now. You know what I'm saying? These young fellas, they come to me, they're stolen, OG. You know, like, they start asking me questions. And I tell them, you can't put a price on peace. Right. That's fine. You know, and I love it out here because you're not a dime a dozen. So, right. like, in the NBA or in Europe, you're a dime a dozen because everyone wants to go to Europe. That's, it's in their yeah. mind. They, right. I want to go to, okay, all right, do that. Go to Europe. Right. Go, to, go right. do that. Right. But over here, we're not a dime a dozen. And you live in the hearts of the people. Right. You know, you become a legend. You know, what right. you do on the court is appreciated for years after you do it. Right. You're not forgotten. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So, like, right. that's why I'm here. You know, right. I'm a legend to these people, praise God. And what I the hard work I put in is appreciated. Right. You know. And, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I definitely saw that, man. You know, obviously, man, I follow you on, on social media. But just seeing how the fans embrace you, man, and, and seeing how people make mixtapes of you and how people send you tapes, even in the country you're not even in no more. I mean, those things, like you said, man, those things you can't buy. Those experiences you can't pay for, man. Like, mm-hmm. so, like, it, it's, I tell people all the time, it's bigger than basketball. You know what I mean? I tell people yes. all the time because every when I used to travel to different countries, you go on over there, so they're like another American coming. And sometimes, like, the, when I was in Turkey, I was the first American, let alone black, one of the black guys ever to play in that city, to let alone live in that city. So they mm-hmm. didn't, only thing they knew about us is what they see on TV. So now yeah. they're watching, like, okay, I'm expecting this because that's what I saw on TV. So my whole thing was, I'm going over there, I'm going to change that perception of what they think of me or what they think of, you know, African Americans. So, you know, that's, that's why I tell people all the time, man, we, we kind of represent the US when we travel these different countries because they expect them athletes to act a certain way, let alone African Americans to act a certain way. So I kind of wanted to go over there and change perceptions like that. People, they would tell me, like, man, I didn't expect this. Oh, man, I was used right. to this. Oh, man, the last player that was here was acting like this. So I was expecting that when you came. So right. it's, 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 it's big. I tell people the time it's bigger than basketball, man. Like I said, and, I got, I, and, and, to, and to piggyback on that, that again, that's Europe. So Europe, right. they have that perception of black people are supposed to act like this. Like I played on teams, even in Turkey, too, where 
they expect me to listen to some type certain type of music. They didn't know that I like classical music. Right, right. You right. know, they didn't know that I, you know what I'm saying? But that's Europe. So like right. when I came out here with my peoples, you know what I'm saying? They let you be you and they don't expect right. you to be anything because they don't have a perception of who you're supposed to be. They want to know who you are. Right, right. You know, right. so that that's 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 like what I'm talking about with Europe. You know, it was more of like, I didn't like it. Right. Straight like that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, like I mean, it. I mean, and, that, and that's the thing, man. It's, it's like you said, man, that you can't pay for peace. Like I tell people all the time, like I was, I've, I've been in a situation where I'm making a lot of money, but I just wasn't happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've been in a situation where I wasn't happy, man. Like I'm like, that's what's going to be fun to me. I mean, I ni- I initially started out of fun, even when as, as, a, yeah. as a kid, man, I was playing basketball for fun. I never knew I can play in college or possibly make an NBA or play overseas. I didn't think that far ahead. I'm from the neighborhood I'm from, we just go outside and play. And then whatever happens, happens. I didn't know about rankings. I didn't know about none of that stuff until people brought it to my attention. You know what I mean? Right. So right. It's, it's, it's like, even when I made a pro, I was telling my agent, I was like, man, yeah, I'm making good money, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy, man. You know what I mean? I'm not happy. I want to, you know what I mean? And I didn't, have, I didn't have a family at the time. So it was just me. You know what I mean? So the money, I wasn't like, I, I wanna, I'd rather take less somewhere else as long as I'm happy. You know what I mean? That would be, that's right. always my thing, yeah, that's man. It. So yeah, that's, that's it. Peace yeah. of mind, man. So this, this, we got to talk about this. We talked about basketball. Your, your dad, man. How's, how's that? <laughs> How, what, what, I see you a little man. And, and, and I tell people all the time, man. You know, when you have kids, that changed the whole perception of your outlook on life, man, whether it's the choices you make or whether it's of, of how you look at life now. You know what I mean? Like, and I seen you as a dad, man, little man, and just the love you have for him and, you know, y'all relationship. And, you know, he's even picking up the basketball and seeing what dad is doing now. And, and so what's that like being a dad now? And also when you travel and you're not with them, what's that like? How is that, you know, that that dealing with that, you know? Man, um, being a father has been great. And, you know, I had him here in Lebanon. Oh, hold on. Someone at the door. Can we pause this real quick? I got to get this Hey, hello. Hey, hello. Thank you. God bless you. Do you have any hot sauce? Hot sauce? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my bad, Trav. I had to get some food, man. You good? You good? You good? You good? Hey, um, yeah, be, being a father, man, it's um, it was great, especially having him out here with me. Mm-hmm. So I had him out here with me for three years, you know. Okay. So he was able to travel, and he still talks about times that we had out here, mm. you know. So he's he's very aware, and um, I'm just being an extension of the love that God gives us every day. Right, I give it to him. It's just an extension. So. Yeah, it's been great, fam. His name is Azir Jeremiah Stogman, you know. And, how, and he's how old is strong, he now? How old is he now, man? He five. He five. I remember he was he born, five. bro. Yeah. Wow, five, man. Jeez, yeah. yeah, I remember he was born, man. What time be flying, man? Man, it do. And I'm happy it's flying though with him in regards to him because he's getting smarter and he's more aware of everything. Right. So like, he, he's more aware of why I'm not with his mom. With, with his mom right. and. He's like, he's very intelligent, you know what right. I mean? So the older he gets, the better for me because he gets to see the truth right. thing, you right. know? Right, so, yeah. right, right. That's what's yeah. So what, 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 year, what year is this for you? What year is this for you? Year nine. Year nine. Hey, I remember you was a yeah. young buck, man. I remember you was a the young <laughs> buck, man. Had questions, man. Now you, you know, ninth year, man. That's that, Like you said, man, that's a, that's a blessing, man, and 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 to, to continue to still play, man. Especially at the level you playing at, man. Every time I watch the tapes, man, like I tell people all the time, bro. It's like it's there's no reason why, man. Like you shouldn't be playing at the highest level, man. Like even when we play together in Greece, man, I'm I'm playing with you, but I'm watching. I'm like, man, and you ain't nothing but like good five, six, seven, bro. You ain't, you ain't that tall, but your heart though, man. Like when you playing against them, like you go in and paint with the big boys, and you don't back down, so. I used to tell people that all the time, man. Like, there's no reason why, man, because you can play with the best of them. Nobody can stop you. You can you can score with the best of them, man. Everywhere you go, you you prove that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's 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 great, man. Just to watch, man. Like I said, I see you from the start into where you at now. Even not just as a as a player, man, but just as a man and you know as a dad and just seeing that whole process, man, and your insight on things now. You know, you know. So it's. Every day, man, it's, it's, I tell people all the time, it's a, it's a learning lesson, man. We learn things every year, whether we're playing basketball, whether we're just dealing with life or whether we're dealing with our family. 
it's, it's, it's a thing to just learn and learn from it and to get better and better and keep getting, you know, just keep growing, man. And then like you saying, now people come, young cats coming to you, ask you advice. Now you've been through it all. <laughs> now you can, you've been through so many different experiences. Now you can go back and share your experiences with them and they look up to you and they see how things are. So you like that leader now. You like that and, role model, you know what I mean? You know what, to piggyback on what you're saying, I mean, um, I think that's the reason why I've been through all this different, these different trials and tribulations and persecution and stuff. I think it's because it's for a story. Mm -hmm. I think it's for other ones who are going in and it's not documented. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, I always tell people God's, God's true treasures are hidden. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's hidden from the light. It's hidden from the world. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, but when you meet these people, you know, they're gems from God. And I, I, right. I pride myself on being one of those people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, um, and then again, like you said, there's no price on happiness. So like, I'm appreciated out here. So out here, I told you I had a meeting with the president of the, the NBA Africa and, mm -hmm. and he straight told me like, we here to watch you play. Like, mm -hmm. don't, you know, we make sure you do everything right. Cause we here to watch you play, you yeah. know? So like, it feels good to be appreciated and know that the work that I put in over the years is not forgotten, bro. That's right. the thing. I, I never want to be forgotten. And, and in Europe, your dama does it. And not right. only that, but you have you have the, the chains on you. They, they chain you up, man. You, you, you be trying to play your game. They want you to play how they imagine you to play. But it's mm -hmm. like, yo, like, I could play in the system, but I still got to have individuality. You right. know what I'm saying? You right. know, and they, they want you to play like, you you know. I ain't going to try right. to say nothing. Right. Mess up right. my I ain't going to mess up nothing. I'm going to, oh. But you know what I'm saying? Let's just say you yeah. have them chains on you. Right. And out here, right. man, they let you rock. Right. You know, so I'm happy, bro. You know, and, I, and, and and that's the main thing, man. That happiness, man. Happiness is key, man. I tell people all the time, man. Life period. Even just if we, we talk about, if we, even if we're not talking about basketball, we just talking about whether it's your job, your day to day, man. Like life is short, especially nowadays, man. With everything that's going on and all the craziness, man. It's more so life is short. You got to appreciate every moment. So the times right. you spend in the place that you're not happy, what's the point? Like for money, like for for right. money. I mean, I understand you got family and everything, but like. For me, nowadays, how I look at life, man, how I deal with things, man, money, if I'm not happy, I can't, I, I can't do it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow my dreams. I'm going to follow my goals. I'm going to be passionate. I'm going to, like, in your situation, I'm going to play where I feel happy at and where I still can make money. You know, yeah, I probably can make money, more money somewhere else, but am I going to be happy, though? You know what I mean? Right. So it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's that thing, man. Um, not, money can't buy happiness. It could buy you many no. things and it could take care of things, but it's not going to buy you happiness, you know? I mean, that's that's why you got rich people to this day that are suicidal. You know, you got mm -hmm. people who got the whole world and they're not happy with their life, you right. know, but I believe it has to do it. I don't want to get into all this, but I think it has to do with media. You know, they paint a picture mm -hmm. of things so people chase something. But once you get it, you find out it's not real. Right. You know what I'm saying? People chase chase this paper that they call money until they find out once they have it, you come with more problems and your, yeah. your peace is gone. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So, like, I, I tell the young fellas that all the time, like, hey, you make sure you, you chase peace and happiness yeah. before you chase right. the money. Because once you have peace and happiness, that money going to come. And right. not only is it going to come, but you're going to enjoy it. Like, right. Okay, I, got a little, I got a little change now, and I'm happy. Like, let's, yeah. let's enjoy ourselves. Right. You right. Know? right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, many, how many more years do you think you got left in you, man? You ain't never hold you. Um, you, bro. You got to be. I'm 29. 29. Oh, yeah, man. I've been yeah. pro since I was 20. Okay. You know, so, um, so how, many, how many more years you want? You think you got, got left in you, man? How much, I got, still I got ten in me. I got ten, especially playing out here. See, I'm not in Europe. I'm not putting miles yeah. on my body. We have one practice that joint two hours, and we just play five on five. <laughs> and how many Americans? And you tell I, you? I tell I tell the young fellas. I say, if you can shoot the ball, you can play anywhere at any time. Like when I'm 50 years old, you, I got a, I got a 45 year old on my team, and he starts, and he starts. That's that's crazy. You know man. what I'm saying? And he could shoot that ball. And that's why he he he's starting. Because he, right. he we put him in the corner. I penetrate and kick to him, and it's money time. You know? And they're, they're wow. the shooters, man. You so you're a big man, you're a shooter, man. You're gonna have a, you can have longevity. Look okay, my body don't operate like that, man. I've been doing a little bit of three on three, man. Look, my body can't <laughs> operate like I used to. Okay, and hey, you put me in hey, you put me in the corner though. You put me in the corner, I'm gonna knock it down. But that's, that's what old, I'm saying. Running, running the court, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man. I'll be the trailer, man. I, I meet. You. I'm going. To, I'm going top the key to top the key. I ain't going no further, man. So yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that's what yeah. that's what he's doing, and that's what I I see myself. Mm. Plus, I'm, I feel good, man. I'm in my prime right now. Like, right. I feel good. You know that's, what I'm saying? I mean, that's. I mean, that's. I mean, that's the, I mean, that's the thing. Take care of your body, man. You know, take care of your body. Eating right. You know, training, keeping up with your body. Um, 
Man, you definitely could play a long time, man. Think exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so as long as you take care of your body, think about it. Kobe played twenty years, man, at the highest level, and and, and post seasons. I mean, he was sporting I me. Mean, so it's about taking care of your body, you can do it. You can have longevity, you know. Yeah. So it just it just, all, it just all depends on what you what you're doing it for, and um, you know, if you're just doing it for the love of the game, if you're just chasing money, then you know it's a different thing. But I'll yeah, tell man. you what, if I if I was in Europe on my ninth year. I'll be getting ready to retire in four years from now. I can, I can, I can see, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, I, my I, whole body be done. All this, all this practice, all this training, instead of resting and and and, and training uh, smart. Right. It ain't about how how much practices you have. Yeah. It's about what you put in that one practice. Right. And for right. some reason, Europeans do not understand that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely it's definitely different. It's definitely different in different countries. You know, it's, it's been in countries where we, like you said, I played in the Middle East where it's, we practice one time a day and it's real lax, super lax. I'm talking to a point. I mean, you've got to you've got to work on your game or, you know, what I mean, it's just you're just chilling, you know. So it's, it's um, and, you know, over in Europe is different. You're going to practice two times at least a day and you're going, it's going to at be least. intense. You know, it's going to be intense depending on who your coach is. So. Um, yeah, man, but you, you aware of that, man, you know, you, you, you ninth year right now, you've been through a lot, you know, um, you know, you got your experience, you know what you want. That's the main thing, man. You know, you, you definitely want that piece and need that piece. Um, you know what you're playing for now. You got a little man, you know, he's watching you every <laughs> step. So it's just, like you said, man, it just changes the dynamics of things and the thought process. But man, look, man, I'm not going to hold you too much longer, man. I, I appreciate you. You know, joining my my podcast. I know you just got the Zoom, <laughs> but you you got it. You got it. Okay though. Look, you you, you I good to go there. I savvy, man. I, I, I mean, shoot, <laughs> I can't do it, bro. Be tough, man. I, I just give it to the female. Like, hey, hey, do you think I'm on that phone real quick? You know what I'm <laughs> man, and, but that, but that's but, but we, we made it work, man. So I just want to say, man, I'm I'm super proud of you, bro. Like I said, man, not just you know on the basketball court stuff that you're doing, man, but just how. You know, being a dad, man, and just how your outlook on life is, you know, keeping that man upstairs, of, you know I mean, first, you know, you know, that, 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 that's a major key, um, man. But he's my as, strength. As, he's my right, strength. As your big, big bro, you know, obviously, you know, I'm always here for you, man. You know, every time you hit me up for advice, I'm always here, bro. So, man, you know, I, that's never going to stop, man. You know, um, like I said, I definitely appreciate you joining the Go Turpins with Travis Garrison on the Field Assistant Networks. I appreciate you, bro. Keep doing your thing, man. I'm going to keep watching. I'm going to keep supporting um, the fans. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's glad to hear from you, man, all the Turp fans, man, um, all your fans, man. They're going to be happy to hear from you, man, and seeing where you're at and what you're doing now. So keep doing that, man. You got a lot of people following you and looking up to you, bro. Just, just continue to understand that. All right. All right, bro. Appreciate you, man. Good luck to you out there, too, bro. Peace and love, man. I love you, dog. I love you, too, bro.